Welcome to this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the HPLC. When you come into the lab, you need to be wearing your lab coat fully done up and have your safety glasses on and over your eyes. All of the lab scripts contain COSH and risk assessment information and you need to have read this before you start working. To start, I'm going to show you the parts of the HPLC. So at the top, we have the mobile phases, A and B. We have the HPLC pump. Let's go put that back. We have the injection port. And down here, we have the column that you're using. When you come to the instrument, it should say instrument idle, it should have a green bar showing. If it isn't, find me or one of the technicians or the demonstrator and we'll make sure that it's ready for you to go. When you're going to run the sample, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to enter the details into the computer and then you're going to inject your sample and start the run. So I'm just going to talk you through the software. So you go to run control sample info, check that it's saving into the right directory, which, is the, which will be your module. And then in sample name, put your sample. So the first one is a blank. So make sure it says blank and then press OK. This isn't going to start until you inject a sample. For the blank, you are only going to be using mobile phase. You're not injecting anything. So you come to the instrument, do the injector up and down, and that will put the blank onto the column and it will start the run. When your blank has run, or any sample has run, you'll come up with this, do you want to open or save your file? Click open and it opens the chromatogram as a PDF. Because it's a blank, it won't be a straight line, it's got quite a small scale. So don't close the file, just minimise it. And we're going to run the first of your samples. You're going to put in your details for your first sample. So it's run control, sample info, and then put a sensible sample name in. It's probably going to be the initials of the people in your group and what the concentration is. And then it's OK again. And then you're going to inject. You need to get your sample. So put your needle in. Now if you draw it straight up you can get air bubbles. To avoid that what I do is I hold the bottom of the syringe so the needles between the liquid and the top and draw the plunger up and down loads of times really quickly and then draw it up to above 20 microliters so I've got it about 30 and now when you look at it there are no air bubbles. And this time, because you've got a sample, on the trace at the bottom, you should be able to see your peak forming. And at the end of your run, you'll get the pop-up to show that the sample's run. When you get this screen, just click open. And you'll get your chromatogram showing peaks for however many components you've got in. 
and underneath the chromatogram you've got the table for the data. So the peak at peak four is the one that we're looking at so that you've got the retention time, the peak width, the peak area, the peak height and it'll do a percentage of the peaks. You want the area for the number that you're going to record. You've now run your first sample, so now you're going to run the rest of your samples to make your calibration plot. To do this, minimise, don't close the pop-up with your chromatogram. And then you're going to enter the sample info in the same way. So run control, sample info, and change the sample name for each sample. When you've run all the samples for your calibration curve, run a few blanks. You're going to need to run maybe one or two of just mobile phase so that you're not seeing your peak in the chromatogram. When you've done that, you're then going to run your unknown sample. Thanks for watching and if you've any questions, send me an email.